Joe Biden promised to end fossil fuels. Once he took office, he made good on that promise. He canceled oil and gas leases. He shut down a major pipeline. Apparently, the U.S. government helped blow up the pipeline from Russia to Western Europe. I mean, they did. And yet on Wednesday, Biden insisted that the cost of energy, the rise in it, the unprecedented rise in it, has nothing to do with him. Here's who he blamed. Because of Putin's invasion of Ukraine, the price of oil and gas increased dramatically. The strategic petroleum reserve is more than half full with about 400 million barrels of oil. That's more than enough for any emergency drawdown. My message to the American energy companies is this. You should not be using your profits to buy back stock or for dividends. Not now. Not while a war is raging. You should be using these record-breaking profits to increase production and refining. Invest in America for the American people. Bring down the price you charge at the pump to reflect what you pay for the product. And the American people will catch a break they deserve and get a fair price at the pump as well. Well, there are so many lies in that script, we're not even going to attempt to reverse engineer it and correct them. Instead, a man much smarter than we, Victor Davis Hanson, a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution, joins us tonight. Professor, thank you uh, for coming on. How do you assess the president's claims about energy? It's very pathetic. He's trying to square a, a circle on, of two things that are in, incompatible. I mean, he came in here with this green religion, which is God is renewable in, energy and Satan is fossil fuel. So he canceled Anwar. He canceled Keystone. He didn't push the Constitution pipeline. He has, he has fewer federal leases than any other president. He got his wish, Tucker. He got, got production down by two, one and a half, two million barrels and scheduled increases he canceled. So he got everything he wanted. It was Stephen Chu, the energy secretary's dream. It was Barack Obama's dream when he said electricity would skyrocket as he cash, uh, canceled coal. And then guess what? Inflation came and there was a spike in demand and the, the American middle class is being liquidated because they have to choose between food and fuel and he wants to be reelected. But being reelected and destroying fossil fuels are incompatible. And the result is this, I guess you'd call it Orwellian paradox, where he goes around the world to the most illiberal regimes, Venezuela, Iran, even Russia before the war, and Saudi Arabia, and his message is, would you please pump this filthy, dirty fuel that we don't like, but we desperately need, and you can do it, but we won't, but you'll do it for our interests, and oh, by the way, we just called you a pariah. Or he's, he goes to the Strategic Petroleum Reserve and he thinks, well, I'm not actually pumping it out of the ground, which I can't do, so I'm pumping it the second time. So if you pump what's already been pumped in, I don't get blamed for it. The green people give me a pass. Or he goes to the oil companies and he thinks, well, yes, I wanted to put you out of business, and yes, I said you're greedy, and yes, I said you're price gouging, and yes, I cut back on your federal leases, but you owe it to me to get reelected to go out and start pumping more fuel that I don't want. And so it's so incoherent that the American people don't even want to attempt to try to understand it. They just don't want him anymore. And it's really hurt him. It's hurt us around the world. And remember, we impeached Donald Trump on the mere allegation that he used national security policy issues for his own political uh, career, our agenda. And what is Biden doing? He's dabbling with some of the worst regimes in the world against our national interest to pump a a fuel that we have in abundance uh, so that he will do better in the midterm. And uh, I don't think, I think the American people are furious about this to the extent they can understand it, so incoherent. You, you got to give him some credit for chutzpah, though, in attacking energy producers you do. for the shortage. I mean, yeah. please. <laughs> He's shameless. He's very shameless, that's for he, sure. He After really saying is. that these executives were sort of sinister creatures and price gougers and dabble in this filthy, dirty oil that's warming the planet, now he's saying, you have a patriotic duty to ignore everything I've ever said on the campaign trail and pump more of it so I can get <laughs> my guys reelected. That's the message. It's unbelievable. Victor Evans Hansen, thank you for that explanation. It's so smart. Thank you. So it looks obvious the Republicans are going to do pretty well.